Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to a special Sunday market intel brief, folks. I uh, wanted to talk about uh, what's happening this week at Top Gun Options because we're opening up the doors uh, for our world-famous, our industry-leading full-throttle options training program. And uh, was going to do this anyway on a Sunday, but after watching the Sunday shows, I just I, we have to talk uh, because what's going on in this country uh, is just – in absolute disgrace. Does it impact the markets? <laughs> Hell yeah. So we're going to talk about that all this week, and it's going to be for free. So kicking off tomorrow night at 8 p.m., I'm going to knock out a welcome aboard brief, give you a little bit of a, a background of who I am. Uh, Matthew Buckley, call sign whiz. Uh, of the history of Top Gun Options has been, been around for, what, about 10, uh, 11 years now, uh, training uh, investors, traders of all skill levels how to successfully, profitably trade options. All you need to do is head to go.topgunoptions.com slash FT. That stands for full throttle, and you can register to attend uh, all or one or a couple of our free briefs. Make sure you register to attend because I'll send you uh, the replays if you can't make it. You can watch them at, uh, at your leisure. Uh, and the full flight schedule of events is on here. Monday night, Tuesday morning, uh, Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night. We'll wrap up. Nobody else does this, folks. You go to these financial events, right? Multiple speakers. They give you, you know, you got 45 minutes uh, where this dude or lady kills you with PowerPoint slides and then asks you for some uh, rather large chunk of change to, quote, trust them. I don't do that. I open up the doors. You see my live personal accounts. You see the Top Gun Options portfolios, and we trade them right in front of you. I show you what I'm doing. Now, remember, I'm not a registered investment advisor, not a broker dealer, uh, nor do I play one on TV. You're getting the eavesdrop, right? It's like you're sneaking on the floor of the uh, the SIBO or the CBOT uh, to see what I'm potentially doing. But what's uh, what you do on your side of your computer and your bunny slippers is between you, your registered investment advisor, and your broker dealer, right? But I'm here to train you. I'm here to put the ladder down uh, after flying fighter jets uh, for years through the United States Navy and then transitioning to a career on Wall Street. Uh, I'm going to teach you these fighter pilot methodologies and that how how they apply to trading, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and one more time. That's go.topgunoptions.com slash FT. Um, sitting here in my bunny slippers on a Sunday, uh, trying to enjoy my coffee. I think I spit it out a couple times. W what an absolute disgrace. In in the span of, a, of, of days, we went from this shining house on the hill, this, this once great republic, to just an absolute implosion. It's a disgrace. The fact that Anthony Blinken or Lloyd Austin or Jake Sullivan still have a job is, I was going to say comical. It's not funny anymore. So this morning, Ant Anthony Blinken, where's all my Democrats, right? Where's all the Democrats on the other side of the aisle who loved John McCain? The only reason they loved John McCain is because he was critical of Trump. They hated John McCain when he was running for president. When John McCain ran for president, they called him a Nazi, a homophobe, and a racist. The second he said he hated Donald Trump, they loved the guy. Well, remember what John McCain said years ago about Anthony Blinken? I think he was nominated for deputy secretary of state or undersecretary. John McCain got on the floor of the Senate. He's like, I don't do this. I hardly ever do this. This guy is a danger to this country. He's like, this is the worst appointment Obama could ever make. This guy's awful and will endanger the country. Anybody see that clip of John McCain played recently? I, I know it happened, and I've, you can Google it and find out for your own. But anyway, here's Anthony Blinken uh, on, uh, was it ABC uh, this morning? Or no, Chris Wallace. It was on Fox. Chris Wallace actually asked the Secretary of State, he's like, does Joe Biden know what's going on in Afghanistan? You ready for his answer? Um, this is an incredibly emotional time for, any of, uh, for many of us, including allies, blah, blah. He went on this word salad. Thank God Chris Wallace, who finally has a backbone, said, sir, respectfully, that, that look, I'm not questioning whether or not the allies have a right to complain. I'm not questioning whether or not al-Qaeda has a presence. Uh, the president said al-Qaeda is gone. It's not gone. The president said he's not heard of any criticism from allies. There's been a ton of criticism. Chris, all I can tell you is what I've heard. And again, this is an emotionally powerful time for a lot. This guy can't even say, the Secretary of State can't even say whether Biden knows what's going on in Afghanistan or not. Well, the Chinese know what's going on in Afghanistan, folks, and they love it. This week, they have been spiking the football saying, hey, Taiwan, are, are you paying attention to what your American friends are like? Your American friends, first of all, are a beatable enemy, and they're also a treacherous friend. You're in trouble, Taiwan. 
Ah, you you can't you you can't. This is awful. Did you see that veteran? I think it was a Royal Marine or a commando in Parliament. He gave one of the best speeches I've heard in a long time from a suffering veteran. Uh, our 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 allies, the Brits. He just absolutely from the heart put a dagger through me and you and the United States uh, of America. We will never be trusted again for anything. My God, the French, the cheese-eating surrender monkeys um, are giving Joe Biden a lecture on moral responsibility. Like, dude, wh- wh- are you kidding me that you just did this? Wow. So Joe Biden telling the nation that he's got everything under control and nobody, no, our allies love me and our standing hasn't been damaged at all is a disgrace. If this were Donald Trump, they would have impeached him 17 times this week and twice on Sunday. Are you kidding me? Lloyd Austin, this guy should be brought on act. He should be fired, should be brought back on active duty because he's a retired four star and court martialed. This man, along with Mattis and all these generals and admirals, have lied for over, for well, let's just say decades. The Afghan army is great. These guys got their stars and went through the revolving door out the front door of the Pentagon to the defense industry. This guy went to a private equity firm or a hedge fund that, you know what his hedge fund invests in? The defense industry. This man has the blood of every young woman and man killed in Afghanistan, both American and Afghani, on his hands. They go out that revolving door to their Raytheon and General Dynamics and Lockheed, and they go back to the Pentagon for lunch or dinner with their old buddies and say, hey, man, you really need this weapon system. It's awesome for Afghanistan. Oh, and the Afghan army's doing great. They're, everything's awesome. Either he's an idiot or he's a liar. There's no third choice, folks. The same thing with Biden, Blinken, Jake Sullivan, and woke General Milley, who for the past couple months – This guy and General Milley have been focused on white rage and white supremacy in our ranks and COVID and critical race theory. These idiots have focused more time on turning people in this country into enemies than the actual enemy. General, Mr. Secretary, you're a disgrace and you need to resign. You need to be held accountable you are still considering bombing military equipment, especially aircraft left in Afghanistan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Taliban, as of today, has more Black Hawk helicopters than Australia, one of our closest allies, one of the five eyes, right? The intelligence com- – oh, speaking of the intelligence community, right? 17 intelligence agencies convinced that Donald Trump was a Russian agent. Didn't see any of this coming. Donald Trump – Russian agent. A fall of Afghanistan in a weekend, physically impossible. Oh, but no, close to the end, Wiz. They they fired a cable out of Afghanistan. Like, uh, this might fall really quickly. Again, our intelligence agencies were more busy executing a coup against a duly elected president than they were worried about our actual enemies, right? Did you see the, who was the Department of Homeland? I love the term, Homeland Security. It sounds like Germany, right? The fatherland. Homeland Security says if you don't agree with a vaccine or you're anti-government in this country, you can be labeled a domestic terrorist. We treat fellow Americans worse than we treat the Taliban. Joe Biden is a disgrace. He needs to be impeached today. Nancy Pelosi on TV. Ah, Everything's great. Are you kidding me, folks? Now, I need to eat a little crow here. Why? Because at the height of the COVID crash, we were bailing out airlines, right? We were, ba- we were paying airline buddies of mine not to work. They were sitting at home getting their guaranteed pay. And I was furious, not just for them, but any company that was being bailed out by the government, right? Well, that's not true. If you're bailing out the airlines and you know cruise industries, why aren't you bailing out my buddy's pizzeria down in Fort Lauderdale? He didn't get shit. Here's why I'm eating crow, because some of my buddies, rightly, in hindsight, said what? Well, Wiz, we are part of the, what is it, the CRAA, right? Civil Reserve Air Fleet, CRAF. This was, this is a Cold War relic, meaning, like, in the Cold War, we're like, hey, if we really need to get millions of soldiers over to Europe to stop the Russian horde, Soviet horde, we need, we're going to need all your airliners. We don't have enough airlift in our military. And I said that was a joke. That was a Cold War relic. It's not going to happen again. 
Wiz, you were wrong. I'll take the wrong on this. I can't even believe that we don't have enough airlift in the United States military to get 10,000, 15,000 Americans out or however many Afghan interpreters out. That's another national embarrassment. We need, we need to use these guys that, to use the airlines. I just can't. Uh, um, oh, and by the way, did you see this? Of course you didn't. The State Department is char was charging $2,000 fee to Americans to try and escape Kabul. We fucking left you behind enemy lines. Folks, that was a movie about an F-18 guy, right? An F-18 pilot ejects over Bosnia behind enemy lines. There are thousands of Americans stuck behind enemy lines. The coward Secretary of Defense, we have no ability to go out and rescue people. What the fuck did you just say? The British, the French, have gotten in their Jeeps and tanks and said, you know what? Taliban, you get in our way, we're going to kill you. We're going to get our people. Lloyd Austin, we have no capability. I love the New York Post headline, Dumb Kirk. When 300,000 British troops were stuck, what did Churchill do? Let's go get them. People in their yachts, in boats, went and got 300,000 uh, of the Brits out, or however many it was. What a mobilization. Lloyd Austin... Make your way to the airport. You're on your own, America. I, I can't, you can't even, I can't, I can't. This is heartbreaking to me. I run a foundation to try and help prevent veteran suicide. This piece of shit on the screen and the president, the secretary of state, the veteran suicide, my phone has been ringing off the hook this week. Why did my buddies die, Wiz? Why am I crippled? What do you tell those people, folks? Awful. $2,000. I think the State Department finally, uh, like, oh, said, oh, geez, all right, maybe we won't do that. Can you believe this? Oh, you'd like to escape the Taliban? That'll be one month's rent, please. I, I, you, you can't. You... This is how bad, badly broken this country is. We got tens, thousands, millions of illegal immigrants streaming into our southern border full of COVID being put on airplanes, flown throughout the United States, mainly to red states to infect them and add more Democrat embryos. We all know that. For free. And they get to suck on our social system and everything else. Oh, by the way, the Department of Homeland Security last month, I forget the exact number. It was something weird, like 708. The Department of Homeland Security said last month they intercepted 708. I, the number's not in front of me. You can look it up. Russians. Do you see that in the news? One of the biggest metrics of success or smiles that is put on my face at Top Gun Options is, is, is that people tell me that they're, they're like, Wiz, I get my news from you because I have to. All of this stuff impacts the market. You think the market – now, to use a wisdom, the market only cares when it cares. The market is going to care, folks, and you have to be Johnny on the spot ready to pound this thing into the dirt. Joe Biden, uh, uh, you know, we've left a trillion dollars worth of assets in country and spent a tr – folks – Joe Biden just spent a trillion dollars on, quote, infrastructure. He's wanting to spend another $3.5 trillion, and you're paying for it. We have tens of millions of Americans sitting on their hands at home being paid not to work, and guess who's going to pay them not to work? You and me. Your taxes are about to go up. Inflation is raging. The only people who think inflation is just super fun and fine is j Powell, Janet Yellen, and Joe, the three J's. Joe, Jay, Janet think everything's great. Folks, there is a swirling, bubbling cauldron on the right side of this chart. And if you're not ready to take advantage of it, you're going to be destroyed. Your 401k is going to be a 201k, I can guarantee you. So, oh, and by the way, in, in you know page 27 news, the FBI shoots down the, conspiracy, the Democrat conspiracy theory that the January 6th riot was pleep. Pre-planned. Oh, and by the way, for half of the stupid Americans in this country, you just saw what an insurrection looks like in Afghanistan, and Joe Biden caused it. January 6th was not an insurrection. You just saw one over the past weekend, live. Um, guys, this week's going to be interesting, right? We saw last week a little bit of a pullback. The market 
you know, uh, of course, when the idiots in CNBC and Fox Business and Bloomberg try and when the market pulls back and they don't know why, they ascribe whatever the news is to that pullback. The market doesn't care for now about Afghanistan. They will. The market will care, folks. I hate this prediction, but it's going to come true. We are less safe now than on September 10th, 2001. Jihadists all around the world who want to kill as many Americans as possible just saw the Taliban defeat us after 20 years. All they had to do was wait. Wiz, what, have you, what would you have done? Barack Hussein Obama failed. After putting two bullets into Osama bin Laden's forehead, we needed to leave the next morning. However, leaving a footprint. The reason they're trying to pin this on Trump, and it's not working because they're cowards, is because we kept a we kept Bagram, we kept Kabul, we kept a mil. You know what was keeping the Taliban at bay? About 2,500 troops in the country, but massive air power. The A and A could have done fine if he kept what Trump was doing. Hey, we're going to do is we're not. Didn't he learn anything as eight years under Obama as the number two? Yeah, he did. He learned how to fly his son, his crackhead son, to China to get a $6 billion deal for his hedge fund. That, quote, I didn't know anything about that. My son just went to China with me on Air Force Two, and we never talked about anything, even on the flight home. Oh, and by the way, the same 17 intelligence agencies that said Trump was a Russian agent that didn't see the fall of Afghanistan also said that Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. It's fake. It's not his laptop. It turns out it was his laptop, and the attorney general in the Delaware region kind of punted prosecuting and looking in all that stuff because he's a political. It's just – it's gross. Folks, this is the end of our republic. We had a good run. <clears throat> My two sons, one who wants to fly for the Marine Corps and one who f wants to fly for the Navy, I've had this – I would not – this is shocking for me to say as a veteran, but it isn't. I would not raise my right hand today to serve this country. It's over with. I have nothing in common with people in Portland or Seattle or Minneapolis defunding the police. You're racist, whiz. I have nothing in common with New England and high tax and all this shit and people who want to strap me down and put an untested therapeutic into my arm or you're going to be a pariah. I have nothing in common, folks. Hell, the only thing that was tying this balkanized group of states together was like an anthem. And this year, going forward, the NFL is actually playing two anthems at their football games. The national anthem, which I thought was for everyone, and the black national anthem. You tell me what unites this country. I thought it was a common group of values and causes, and it's done. Care about you, your family, and your friends. That's all you have left. Higher taxes are coming. Inflation's coming. Terrorism is coming. The Taliban, Afghanistan, will be an absolute breeding ground and hive of terrorism that will kill Americans. And oh, by the way, if you're Israel, you're looking over at Iran going, well, now the United States sucks. We're going to have to do this on our own. There will be war between Iran and Israel. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? What a bottom line, folks. Make sure you register because I'm going to tell you how to trade this. This might have seemed like a 15-minute rant about nothing, folks. When, not if, the market cares about everything I just ranted about, it's going to be horrific, not for us. I was one of the only financial professionals on the face of the planet to predict the COVID crash to the day. I was in a live trade brief when I saw Donald Trump lie in Davos about the uh, – what are you asking me about this, this virus for, this flu? Uh, it, it's not coming here. I trust ye. Good man. Good backswing. Been to Mar-a-Lago. Come on. Uh, what a waste of time. Uh, I, I, what? No. Move on. I'm like he's lying, and we pounded the market into the dirt as the so-called, quote, smart money lied. Oh, buy here. This is the bottom. Oh, I, this is a dip. I'd buy it. Donald Trump, the market's looking great here. The next day it went down like 3,000 points. I nailed it. The smart money didn't. Come here, attend our full throttle training, open up the doors. You see what's going on here. You like it, you become a member. You don't, you go on your way. No harm, no foul. I guarantee you I will show you some great trades, some great methodologies, and what we do. No holds barred. I unzip the flight, shoot up. I'll show you my losses. I'll show you my gains. I'll show you everything. We learn more from our losses than we do our gains, trust me. 
go.topkinoptions.com slash FT. This week, take your trading supersonic, okay? Please try and have a great rest of your day. Turn off the TV. I have to watch this stuff because it does impact the markets. You don't. I'll tell you exactly uh, what you need to know, and I'm going to tell you what you're not seeing, okay? One of the reasons uh, I'm so successful here at Top Gun Options is my Rolodex, man, my network in the Pentagon, Capitol Hill, hedge funds, everything, man, from politics to London to Hong Kong trading. I'm wired, man, and I'm going to tell you what's going on in the world. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge, and I'll see you tomorrow night at 8.